Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 19th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. This tutorial will be covering a level select screen. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So a level select screen is basically going to be a case of a scene that has um, some kind of like spinning cube, and that cube is going to represent what the level is. So in this case, it's going to be Desert Run, for example. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new scene, but we're going to change the scene in a way that we haven't previously done. You'll see what I mean. Again, if you've played Timmy and Mousy, you'll probably know what the level select screen looks like. So in order to do this, let's create a new scene. So file, new scene, and let's have this basic built in, which is fine. Uh, let's double click on the main camera. And this is where it's all going to take place. So the camera isn't technically going to move at this stage, but what we'll do is create a game object, 3D object, cube. And this cube I'm going to put in the center of the scene. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's have this as 4x4x4. Four by four by four. And that looks okay. So now I'm going to move the camera into a position that basically makes the cube look kind of, well, 3D at least. Uh, so let's pan the camera down, probably to about there. Cool. Right. So the idea what we'll do here is we'll make this cube look like a representation of the desert run level. Now to do that, let's go to materials and let's just drag and drop the sand material onto it. Uh, let's go to the environments. Let's go to prefabs and let's drag a couple of things on here. So let's drag, um, let's drag a tree. Uh, let's drag... Uh, a rock, let's drag another rock, and let's drag a bit of grass, and maybe a tree stump. There we go. Right, so now the idea is we're going to merge all this together into one single object. So firstly, let's reduce the size of the tree. Uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, that may be too small, let's try 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So basically align all this with the cube in like whatever way you would want it to do. So that looks okay. Let's bring that up to about there. Uh, let's put the flower bit probably there, maybe reduce the size, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and maybe duplicate it. Uh, let's bring it here, rotate it just a little bit. Let's increase the size of this rock, uh, three, three, three. Uh, let's place it here and let's bring this rock into position as well. So quite clearly this now represents the level that we have put together. Wouldn't you say? I would say so. Now, the idea of what we'll do is we will kind of merge all this together now into the cube. So take all those objects and place them inside the cube. Go to game view and have a look at that. So I think we need a little bit more representation from the camera. So what we'll do is drag it upwards, move it in, pull it down just a little bit, maybe rotate a bit more. Yeah, I think that should do the trick. There we go. So now what we'll do is we will reuse a script that we already have created rather than create a new one to kind of make this spin to give it even more immersion. So let's go to our scripts folder. And if you remember the script that we used to rotate the coin, we basically had that on there. So let's drag and drop that onto the cube. Let's rename the cube to desert run and press play. Now there is going to be not an issue per se, but if uh, we go down to it, there should be an audio to play there, but there isn't. And what I think we might need to do is actually go into the coin collect script. I was originally just going to, oh, it's not the coin collect, is it? It's uh, collectible rotate. Sorry, that is comple <laughs> completely on me. It's the collectible rotate we want on there. Not the collectible coin, it's not a coin, is it? <laughs> so remove that. Let's add the collectible rotate and press play. And we should see this actually spin now. A little bit fast, but that's okay. We can change the rotate speed here. So let's have this set as 0 
two five maybe. Oh, now I think about it, it is an integer. So let's go into our collectible rotate. Let's change it to a float. There we go. Save. It's not going to affect any of the coins in the game because they're still going to function the exact same. But it now gives us the opportunity to rotate this at a decimal value. So let's have this as 0 0.25. Press play. And there we go. So now what we need to do is let's add some more to this. In fact, I'm going to bring that tree down just a little bit so it's not floating. Uh, firstly, let's add some audio to this. So let's go into our audio. Let's go into BGM and drag and drop this stage select. And as always, head to the pinned comment. You can go and download this absolutely free. And I am just going to attach this to, uh, in fact, let's create a new game object. So create empty. Let's have stage select controls and in there let's create a new object and have this as bgm drag and drop stage select onto there and click loop uh, i'm going to reduce the volume a little bit so now that was 0.7 and press play cool awesome it's starting to take shape now so now what we'll do is we'll get rid of everything else in the scene. So it'll just be a completely black background to give it that side of immersion. Again, if you played Timmy Mousy, you'll know. Uh, so let's go to Window. Let's go to Rendering. And let's go to Lighting. Click on Environment. And Skybox. Click None. You should get a very grey scene. But if we press uh, Play or go to Game View, it'll just be blue, which looks a bit weird. So in order to change that, let's go to our main camera. Click on background and change it to black. Okay, so now we've got that in place. Next thing we need to do is let's start dealing with a little bit more UI. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to, uh, it, no, not image. We'll have text. And this text is going to say desert run at the top. So let's go back to our scene view. Double click text. Let's zoom out just a little bit and let's anchor this in the top center and we'll call this stage name. This is going to be changed as we develop more and more levels. Uh, so let's zero out the position and put it into place. Let's play around with it down here and have the alignment as center and center. And let's just have it say desert run as of right now. Let's have it bold. Let's have the font size bigger than what it is. Let's have 60. Let's use the rec tool here and increase the size and then shift it back into position. So it will look like that. Next, what we'll need to do is change the canvas. So we need to go down to canvas scaler, scale with screen size, and let's set the screen size that we have on the previous scenes. So it's everything is in sync. And it looks like Desert Run needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's increase the size to maybe 96. Yeah, that should do. Let me move it down a little bit as well. Cool. I think that looks okay. So the next thing we'll do is let's have a button on here. Now, we're not going to make this button function this time because we need to make our main menu come to this screen first. Uh, but then we'll modify this to go into the next bit and next bit, make everything flow nicely. Uh, so for now, game object, let's go to UI and let's go to uh, button. We've dealt with buttons before, so I'm not going to uh, go into what we're going to do here. But let's call this select and play. And let's have the anchoring down the bottom middle. Zero out the position. Let's double click to zoom in. Uh, I think we need to make the button much bigger, so let's do that. That should be okay, I think. We can always change the camera angle and all stuff like that in a bit. Uh, let's have the text say play. And let's change it to, um, well, let's make it quite large, shall we? Let's make it bold. Let's make it 108. And it's just a button for the sake of a button right now, but we do need to move the camera out just a little bit, I think. Uh, oops, that's a little bit far. Let me zoom in on it. 
There we go. How does that look? Yep, I think that's okay. So let's press play and see how that looks. Cool. So what we'll do is eventually we'll have this button that takes us to the next stage. But we need now to make sure that our main menu can take us to this level select screen. And I'm still, I'm still not convinced with that camera. I am not convinced. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just that little movement I was happy with. So let's save our scene now. So let's save into scenes and have this as stage select. And let's go to file, build settings. Now, obviously, if you're in Unity 6, this will be slightly different, but all you need to do is just make sure you add open scenes and remember the scene number, at least for now. So stage select is scene two. Do you see what's going on here? So let's close that down and let's head back to our main menu scene just so we can test all of this out. And let's go to our main menu controls and go into the main menu control script right here. And all we need to do is work with this now and say, instead of taking us to the level that we want to play, take us to stage select. So let's go to here and select two. Save, head back into Unity. Give it a moment just to compile. And let's press play. And what should happen is we should, yep, fade, click to start, and start game now will take us to our level select. Now, obviously, this is quite loud. Obviously, once we've got more levels in place, we're gonna have some arrows either side to take us to the next level uh, to select, take it to the next level and select. Uh, but for now, we've got that level select uh, piece in place, piece in place. And like I say, it's all about immersion at the moment and creating a nice flow. So what we'll do in the next tutorial is we'll add the ability to take us to a, the next scene. And that next scene is going to be like an informational scene. It's going to be like not a fake loading screen per se, but it'll be a way of, you know, quickly reminding the player, this is how you play. Because obviously for the first time it might get a bit confusing, but we'll only have that scene display for just a moment. Uh, just to kind of say, you know, wazzed, move left, right, spaces, jump. Um, but yeah, all of this will start flowing quite nicely uh, by the end of the next tutorial. So remember to subscribe, click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I'll see you next time.